we, what we did was simple. Pay back Bank of Uganda, but Rufasaja Baraba had to remain with an obligation to government of Uganda. And we still have the securities held in central bank to this effect. This revelation by the Deputy Secretary of Treasury, Keith Muhakanizi, last week sparked off a new twist to the 21 billion shillings Basaja Baraba allegedly owes to government. Government bailed him out in 2003 after he failed to clear loans with banks, appearing before the Public Accounts Committee of Parliament to defend him himself as why he has since failed to pay government. Basaja Baraba said some people have continued to blackmail him, saying he actually has no debt with the government. Keith Muhakanizi was why, here. Why, you, are why did you to? choose to put Muhakanizi's letter and in, you don't put your letter? Even when it is Muhakanizi who said you never paid. You need so to, there but, is a letter which but, they are saying. They but we have a copy. Enough. Why can't you? We have a copy. I think yeah. we should not be black. Anyway, like excuse that. me. No, no, no. no, excuse, no. Not proper. Hey, no. Please, please. No, no, no. Please. And according to the expenditure of government, this money was released and the letter is here. And it is the same minister which has said they have never been paid. No, but this is the so, evidence. So, so, because so this money was in the budget paid by government. He said the money was offset from the compensation of 142 billion shillings he received from the government when government cancelled his contracts in Kampala markets. When Haba Group of Companies was getting the payment of the claim, mm. it was agreed that this 24.5 billion should be netted off. Yeah. And if that if that some any person says that it is challenged, but where is that one? Just hold on. Just uh, uh, Andy, can you if allow? that that one is challenged, mm. let any person in finance or Bank of Uganda prove to us mm. where they paid us 142 billion. You must have a document to show you the payments that went to you, which you should be able not to confront the government with and say, look, this is what you paid me. Even when government officials in the Ministry of Finance claim that Basajara has not paid, documents availed to the same committee clearly indicate that the payment of the 21 billion shillings was made to the Bank of Uganda. In a letter dated 5th March of 2010, the Solicitor General through the Ministry of Finance requisitioned 46 billion shillings to compensate a group of companies and deduction of the 21 billion shillings was made. However, Basajara could not satisfy the committee and is now threatening to sue government again. If it was offset, then that money would have gone to the government account. Do we have that evidence? The auditor general captured the payment on deductions of the money. Mr. Now, Chairman, if we go on the letter... Mr. Chairman, the evidence is here, Mr. Chairman, and it shows the amounts here down, together with the check paid. Mr. Chairman. If we are put a task to ask the receipt from government, of course we are going to go back to court, and court will order them to give us the acknowledgement of the payment. Because we have evidence in court, and we have also a consent that we signed with Bank of Uganda. Even after claiming that he has paid, Bank of Uganda is still holding on his land titles and the case is before court to force government to avail the titles to him. The Minister of Finance last week threatened to auction the titles if Basajara does not make good of his promise. We can only get the order from either court or this parliament to get our titles if Bank of Uganda was paid. However, the disappearance of 24.5 billion shillings Basajara claims he paid has raised concerns among members about who could be holding on to the money close to two years since the money was allegedly paid. The committee has resolved to resummon all parties as the search for the money continues. Jingo Francis, NTV Parliament.